Hello everybody, I'm Mustang Gus, and welcome back to another video. Now, I'm a huge fan of Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together, and they're pretty hard survival games, but after over a thousand hours, you can survive pretty easily. But recently, a moderator and friend of mine, Boozman Jaden, redeemed 10,000 channel points over on Twitch and challenged me to take on the Boat Locked Challenge. Very simple premise, we can only build on boats. Pick it up on episode 3. We have a weird glitch where the entirety of the background of the map is black. This did luckily fix itself later. The reason we are in the map is we are trying to find the spawn for the moose goose, which we're going to need to kill for the fe down feathers to make a luxury fan. By some miracle, on the very first frame, pretty much, of this episode, a frog rain started, and there's not much we can do with that here, but Boozman is back at the main base, and he befriends a pig with some meat, and starts a war between the pigs and the frogs, giving us some delicious frog legs and pig butts. In the meantime, I begin harvesting all the resources from the Lunar Island. I completely forgot reeds are even here, but we're going to need them to make a bird cage later on, so I grab some of those, I grab some of the moon rocks to make some celestial swords, which we're going to need to help us kill moose goose and i grab one anemone because i'm not 100 percent sure if you can build them on boats or not i presumed no but i was wrong about the wall so i decided to test it out and oh my god you actually look at this it's green you can put it on boats what so of course we had to make a farm out of it here is what i came up with if i was to make this again i'd probably put the spider den in the middle to make it a bit more efficient but this was my first try and it works sort of sort of Heading back to the mainland after a very long sail, we make it home with four celestial swords, which should hopefully between two of us be enough to take a moose goose down. I also forgot to mention I grabbed a 40 stack of stone fruit to help us survive the drought of food that will definitely be coming in summer. And I also wanted to go on like a long summer voyage at sea to try and find a fig forest. And having lots of food available on the boats, so we can stay on the water as long as possible, would definitely help with that. And as you can see, Boozman has been working away on building a drying rack boat, very nice, and Abigail, in her constant need for war, attacks every mob within 10 inches of us. Ah, oh, Abigail, you're really starting to get frustrating with your warmongering. <laughs> And with that, the preparations for summer begin. We have a eye plant over there, but unfortunately it's been patched and you can't put eye plants on boats, so there's not much we can do, but maybe we can run mobs into that later on. First thing we need to do is get some gold in order to make endothermic fire pits. We're going to need one of those at the main base and one of those at the traveling boat in order to keep cool. We already have plenty of nitre for endothermic fires to keep cool, and we've got plenty of stone to create thermal stones to cool in the fridge or buy endothermic fires to keep us cool, which will be nice. I go and get some gold to make the endothermic fire pit to very nice. Had to destroy half the things on the boat to fit it in, but we did eventually fit it in. Really annoying that our boat with everything built on it is the one we can't get out of this lock. Oh, we have to move that at some point. It's going to be a massive pain. Boozman gets his first present of the video. Hand covers. Wow. Just what he always wanted. Go back for some more gold in order to make an endothermic fire pit for the traveling boat that is now ready to go in summer for our fig forest finding adventures. We get some armor ready for taking on the moose goose. I reckon two sets of log suits and football helmets each should be enough to keep us protected. And another present. <gasps> Will it be the first good thing of the entire series? No, of course not. It never is. Try and remember the recipe for trail mix. Can't do it and decide to build the really weird recipe book that requires a carrot to make. Why is that a carrot? Why is it not like reeds or papyrus? <laughs> I don't know. It's an easier recipe at least. Make a couple of trail mix. Fill us both up. And with that, we are ready to take on the moose goose. Now, I only brought eight heels each which turned out to be a lot closer than I thought it would be. Eight heals is like about an entire full one health bar. But what I completely forgot is because we're playing Wendy, we actually do 25% less damage if Abigail's not there. And unfortunately, right at the start, you see the moose goose isn't spawned, so we take out one of the moose lanes to bring it in. And I accidentally kill her by swinging one too many times. Oh my god! I'm actually starting to hate this character. I'm actually genuinely starting to hate this character. <laughs> So many frustrating sub mechanics, but with that, you know what time it is, everybody. Boss o'clock.
And with that, Boost Goose is slain. A little bit higher than I was expecting. I think because Boozman didn't realize that the Moose Goose is a scream attack that makes you drop your weapon, and I had a minus 25% damage modifier and accidentally killed Abigail. It took a lot longer than expected, but we got her in the end. Unfortunately, it's a full moon and Boozman transforms and takes it down, but we make it back to base, create the luxury fan, rest up to get all of our health back, and then cook the meat of the Moose Goose up into a meaty stew, and revive Boozman, eat one of those each, and boom, we are back to full stats. Oh, nothing feels better and don't starve than having absolutely full stats. That's a good feeling. And while we are chilling at the base, we catch our first bird, which reminds me, we need to go and build a bird cage. So I go and get some reeds from the swamp biome and discover, oh, ooh, a rook set piece. Orange man would be proud. That is a actually insanely good way of finding spiders. I didn't even think about this. I was just grabbing the reeds, but look at what he just decides to do in the background. Just absolutely steamrolls like 20 spiders. Oh my god, we picked like a character specifically for farming spiders for a boat, and there's just been so many like natural spider farms that have come to us. We got so many resources from this, including a cheeky 16 monster meat. Very nice. That's going to be good when we get the bird later. Very nice. And you see the corner of the screens there, chat? Oh, we are nearly in summer. So it's time to go back and get a last bit of emergency gold, because while we have built the endothermic fire stations, and then even some more gold, as I forgot, we also needed gold for not only the birdhouse, but also, of course, as any person who survived summer will know, the ice fling matic Super important. Luckily, we'd already found some gears. Gears is normally the hard part of this. But with some gears and some gold and some rearranging of the base, because this is makes your space like very tight, we have the ice fling matic set up and everything but our lock-locked boat is now fully protected by the ice fling matic Delicious. Whew, we did all that just in time. Summer has started and it's time to hit the high seas in search of a fig forest. Now, the only thing I know about fig forests is they don't spawn near land. So my first idea was to just go out into the deep sea and follow it around and hope for the best. And I'm going to show you guys this clip in its entirety because otherwise I don't think you'd believe me. We've had such good luck. We found like Pearl's Island right away. We found the Sea King right away. We found the Lunar Island right away. And look at this. This is just like the most insane luck of all. Because all of those have like a sort of defined spawn where the Fig Forest has none. And literally we've just left on the boat. Is there a Fig Forest already? Oh my god it is! As soon as you see the canopy on top of your stream, it's official, that's a fig forest. So, first thing we do is ram a fig tree, which will drop a fig seed to the ground. I was hoping we could cheese needing a pinching winch by getting it to land on the boat and then sinking the boat, but unfortunately, we didn't. So what we're going to need to do is befriend Pearl and trade some empty jars with her in order to get the pinching winch. So in order to befriend a pearl, you must do two friendly actions, and the easiest one is she naturally has six unique drying racks spawned next to her, so we can put six food on it for that, but I don't know what to do for the other one. But by an insane happenstance, there was still a lure plant spawned from spring. I'm pretty sure they despawn in summer, but I might have that wrong. Maybe it's winter they despawn in. But luckily that was there, and with giving her six meat, we were able to befriend her, yes. <laughs> befriend her tier one, at least. There's a lot more uh, friend stations you can get. Weirdly, check this out. We destroy the lure plant, and then it respawns just for a second. It's like, ah, second life, no. And with that, we get the pinchingest of the winches. This is a pretty niche item. You're probably very rarely going to see this in your world unless you go out of your way to get it. But you could use it to pick things up from the sea floor. There's three things that I know about. There's, of course, the seed to the fig tree. Random flotsam, which is pretty much just sticks and grass and, like, rocks and, like, basic resources. But if you find an X marks the spot inside a jar, you can fish up the one the only sea treasures oh i could almost see the giant gold bars in boozman's eyes when we pulled this thing up <laughs> look at it it's beautiful i love them so much i normally just use them as decorations in my base instead of opening them because they're so cool but if you do open them you get uh, ruins loot and with that we've winched up the fig tree seed and with a downwards winch it is officially planted in our base and if you guys didn't know it takes a ludicrously long time to grow figs. I counted it while editing this video. It took us real time two hours and 15 minutes. I think you can speed this up slightly if you have excessive glomagoop to make the um, 
fertilization wraps to skip the first few stages but that would only probably take it down to two hours like it's still an incredibly slow process but worth it fig food is like insanely good in this game and it grows in winter it's one of the only foods that does that so definitely worth uh emergency we parked just outside of the range of the ice flying nomadic but don't you worry everybody i bought this luxury fan for a reason mm, i knew that was going to come in handy but unfortunately all that excess fire caused boozman to overheat and take it down but no worries we have heaps of excess spider glands to heal up and revive them no worries now here i'm trying to open a present and somehow i miss attack and it makes abigail target gloma and kill them no we need gloma for the growth selves oh i'm never summoning abigail again i'm not even kidding uh, then we go ahead and open up the sea chest for some tasty loot. Thulacite suit, very nice. Yellow and purple gem. Oh, I'm excited to use those. Those can give us some crafts. Go and harvest some basic resources. Start overheating because unfortunately our thermal stone's broken. But no worries, we've got a luxury fan to keep us cool. Unfortunately, Boozman does not and he takes another down. But never worry, more spider resources, more revives. Yeah, unfortunately, Boozman has no way to keep cool away from the base. We're just going to have to chill at the base for the next few days by the endothermic fires. But only five more days of summer, and then we're back to autumn. So we're nearly there. We are nearly there. And with that, the fig tree has finally grown to its first stage. So we need to get some growth salves. For that, we need one glomagoop and two figs so we got, went and harvested all of the figs from the fig forest and hopefully with the glomer groups we have available that should be enough to fully grow the tree now you can grow it a little faster by using the selves to skip the first few growth stages but i didn't know that so it ended up taking us a little longer it's day 71 so we go back and get glomer real quick boozman takes another down i think because he's transforming during the full moons and it like drains his stats but he's gone down to that like every time and then he goes down again unfortunately to a law plant and Oh my god, he was killed by a lore plant, and he was holding a walking cane. Oh my god, it's digested his walking cane! No, no, F's in the comment for Boozman's walking cane. Is that not the most tragic thing you've ever seen in Don't Starve? Oh my god, that's like almost the only way it's possible to lose a walking cane. Oh, Boozman, you poor soul. Oh, and we get a new present. Anything good? No. Why do I keep expecting it to be good? It never is. It never is. One of us must have been too close to the base during that full moon, and the pigs wrecked our grass walls, destroying our pig set piece. So I'm going to have to go and set that back up quickly. Now, last time I got it at a perfect square four, but this time it wouldn't let me place it down. So I guess we have to do a six, but that works fine too. And with that, we've officially made it through an entire year. Whoa! Let's go back into autumn, the chill season. And with that, it's time for some base upgrades. First and foremost, remember we discovered that anemones could be placed on a boat well it's time to go and grab those for our new and upgraded spider farm but more importantly grab some moon rocks in order to craft the celestial pastern and with some moon rocks and a purple slotted gem and a moon crater we get it crafted and use a, another purple gem to switch characters into my main the man himself wormwood oh i love this guy and with Wormwood, we are at a slight disadvantage as we lose sanity when we cut down trees. But with Boozman as Woody to cut down the trees, I think this is still a good character choice. And now, as you can see, we can build mushroom planters for the base, and the base is looking great. We really have everything we need now. I was actually, like, running out of ideas here, like, waiting for the fig tree to grow, upgrading the base. It's at, like, full nine tiles now. But, oh my god, it's grown! We did it, yes! Oh my god, that took so long. That took so long! We almost went all... All the way to winter waiting for this fig tree to grow but it's finally here lightning protection food heat protection cold protection oh my god the fig tree does it all oh, i'm so proud of this like look at this base look at this base Mwah. beautiful beautiful and there's only one way to end off this video and that is with two delicious figgy snacks mm delicious scrumptedly umptious but unfortunately that's all we have time for today everybody thank you all so much for watching and tune in next time to find out what happens in year two of boat locked ah angus you're already technically in year two <laughs> don't worry about that ne next video is definitely year two this was just getting the fig tree ready <gasps> the main part of year two is going to be moving the base over to the sea king and replanting seaweeds there to protect us from hands. Ooh.